Hello everyone, so this time I would like to share a video on how to create custom pleats. This method I use quite a lot and I find it very convenient and it allows a lot of flexibility when it comes to designing pleats and adding many pleats to one pattern piece. So here I have just a shirt from closed module library. I adjusted the sleeve a little bit, added some volume and I will add a bunch of pleats uh, to this pattern piece just to show you how this method works and even though it's a little bit of a work and maybe at first it feels a little bit confusing but in the long run I think you can save a lot of time and effort um, by using this method. So first of all as I will create a lot of pleats at some point um, the pattern piece layout will become very important just so I know which pattern piece belongs to which pleat. So that's why I place the pattern piece in an area where I can put a lot of pattern pieces next to each other. Um, next I will show you the automatic pleat function that's included in close. So it's located here, it's called pleats. And when you use it, um, you can create pleats automatically. So just like that, inputting a few values, choosing some uh, options, and you can see the preview of the pleat. This function is not bad, I think especially in uh, straight pattern pieces it works very well and you can create several pleats at once and you can create different type of pleats. It is useful in some cases, but for example in this case when you have curved lines there is this error where this curved line is not symmetric to this side. So basically you have to redo this curve because if you will leave it like this and you will sew it to this curve, it will affect the simulation. So I'm pretty sure there will be some unnecessary wrinkle here. Um, so that's why I don't like to use it on curves like this because I have to do this extra, extra step by fixing this. I hope they update this function. Otherwise it's, it's very convenient. And other thing that's not great is that it kind of uh, repositions the pattern so you have to simulate and the whole pattern um, yeah you have to simulate the whole pattern of course when it's only one pleat and it's a case like this the re-simulation part is not that difficult but imagine when you have a big pattern piece and you already have a lot of pleats and you have spent some time in making sure those pleats are in the right direction and then the simulation is good and then you decide, oh, I want to add another pleat somewhere. And then you have to re-simulate the whole pattern piece again and, and make sure again that all the pleats are correct direction and so on and so on. So in this case, it's not, in, in that kind of case, it's not very convenient that you always have to re-simulate the whole pattern piece. So yeah. So with this method, you are avoiding that. So I will go step by step and hopefully it's not too confusing because I feel like I've been using this method for so long. I don't find it so confusing, but I remember at the beginning, it took me some time to understand, okay, this is the outside fold. This is the inside fold. These pattern pieces are these pattern pieces. I need to select those points, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, take it slow and maybe have some patience. Um, even though it's a, it's a little bit difficult, as I said before, in long term, if you use it long term, it will get easier and um, you will get much faster and get more benefits from it. Okay, so basically I've created this line here and this will be my outside fold and then I will create another line which will be the inside fold. So let's say I'll put it here and then I will do extend trim and add point to pattern outline. I will cut this here and with trace tool I will trace this part and I will do quick sewing just to help position um, this pattern. So in this case usually you would say oh you have to change sewing line type to turned but in this case it's not really necessary because it's just a temporary sewing line. I will merge everything anyway so I don't do the extra step and change the sewing line type. So where's my pattern? Superimpose under, the pattern is positioned under the main pattern piece. Then I do another Control C, Control V, copy paste, 
and I do again quick sewing just to help to position this pattern piece and superimpose under okay so here I have the main piece and then I have these two pieces that are creating the inside fold okay and now I have to adjust sewing a little bit first of all um, I will move this back so first of all I don't need this sewing so basically the sewing that connects these two pattern pieces here instead I need this sewing so that connects the pattern piece of the inside fold to the main pattern piece and I also don't need this line because the inside fold is definitely not attached to the main pattern piece here okay so here is my pleat and another step I need to do I need to secure the top of the pleat just so that pieces are not hanging down and in this case I definitely need to change sewing line type to turned so I'll show again so I connect these two and then I connect these two lines like this and here of course I also change the turn okay and once I simulate the plate is finished basically and now I can do some design so for example if I want to change the position of this point maybe I want to make it more like this then I can select these two points so basically it's this corner and then I can move them together like that so I think this is quite convenient and also I can adjust easily the position of the inside fold just in case I wanted to finish earlier or um, continue further for example I wanted to finish one centimeter to this side like that so that's totally possible and here I can of course also adjust um, the curves and everything but I think this step is also good to do after everything is merged because then you can see the overall curve of the hem and I think then perhaps it's easier to create a cleaner line but at the same time you can do it also in at this stage if you want to okay so now I will create a bunch of other pleats so maybe I will create one here So if you want to see the position more clearly you can switch on the internal lines and this will help you in the design process to really position the pleat okay extend trim add point to pattern outline and then I also want to create the place where the inside pleat will be located okay so here will be cut with trace tool trace and quick sewing superimpose under copy paste add quick sewing superimpose under you can simulate at this point and adjust the sewing delete this one create this one instead and delete the sewing and sew down the top of the pleat change sewing line type to turned and here is the pleat maybe I want this to go further let's say 20 centimeter And I want more volume here as well. Maybe a bit lifted. Okay. 
Maybe I can bring this down a little bit. Something like that. Okay, I feel like I need to create a pleat here as well. Okay, so now we can finally do the merging, which is also very simple in this case. So first of all, you have to do some flip normal action. Um, how to do that? So first, I would change to texture surface. And in a real life fold, of course, the fabric would be facing up the right side of the fabric would always be facing up but here as you can see the right fabric is actually facing inside so this is um not correct i don't even know how to explain it. but basically um here is the main part you would hide it and here is the pattern piece that creates the inside fold and when you look at it it, the back side of the fabric should be looking back at you. So that's, that's the rule. So that's why now you can see that the right side of the fabric is looking at you. So you need to do flip normal and that fixes it. And you can see that also in the 2D window, the position of the pattern has been changed. And now you can click on the sewing, right click on the sewing and also it depends on which sewing line you right click. So if you right click on this line, then this pattern piece will join this pattern piece. So that's what I want. So right click merge and um, these pattern pieces are joined. And here with these two, you don't actually have to do anything. Just right click and merge, right click and merge. And then your pleat is created all as one pattern piece and here the same so i hide the main right click flip normal right click on the sewing merge merge and merge okay And what happens if you don't flip normal? It merges upside down. So that's not what you want. Okay, so here all the patterns are merged. And I'm now working on a very high particle distance, it's 20. So I put it on 5, put additional thickness collision on 1. And here you can see I've created quite a few beautiful folds like that. And I will copy it to the other side. And now I have a nice volume sleep. Of course here, um, because there's a lot of fabric now and there's a lot of weight, it is kind of distorting the armhole a little bit. So you definitely need to put in 
um, some fine tuning here to make the simulation better. One thing that I can already suggest is to change the sewing line angle here to 360. So it doesn't try to make that 180 fold angle. And then another thing, so it doesn't stretch. You can see there's a pretty significant stretch happening. You can add 100 um, ratio elastic. And then you can add seam taping. Maybe the strongest one. And little by little, the armholes uh, shape is improved. And of course, in this case, I don't create sharp fold lines by choice because I want to create this kind of um, voluminous, free, free falling um, folds, sort of a delicate look. But if you want to add fold lines, and it's difficult to find them, you can switch on the show base lines and then by clicking on the line, for example, you can see this will be the outside fold. You click in 3D on the baseline and you can find it on your pattern with the trace tool. You can trace it, offset as pattern outline, do one or two millimeter to each side. If it's outside fold, change fold angle to 90. And then you can achieve beautiful sharp folds like this. Okay, so this is it for the video. I hope you find this method useful and it wasn't too confusing. And if you have any questions or concerns or problems, feel free to add comments. I will try to help you. Okay, thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.